Hi there. I'm Matt with K15T, and we are going to look at how to create beautiful and effective pages and live docs in Confluence. And this is really important because it's very easy to fill a page with content in Confluence, but it's a little trickier to lay it out so our teammates can find the information they're looking for. So first, let's look at how to help people understand the purpose of the page before they even glance at its content. Time found that 55% of people spend 15 seconds or less on a page before they decide whether or not it has the information they need. So it's very important we communicate the correct things on our pages as quickly as possible. Back in the old newspaper days, there was the term above the fold, which meant the most important information was above the fold of the newspaper. Otherwise, people might not even notice it or it might not catch their eye. So we want to make sure that our most important information is at the very tippy top of the page, and that starts with the page title, which should explain what the page is all about. We have a really great video that will tell you exactly how to create page titles, but if you have Confluence Premium or Enterprise, you can actually use AI to read the content of the page and recommend the title for you. To aid our page title in its quest for spreading knowledge, we can use a page emoji, which is a great symbol for indicating what the page is about. It even shows up in the content tree and a page header where we can pick from a large collection of images or add a custom image to further spread the meaning and the purpose of this particular page. Finally, to help people understand what is on the page or live doc, you can add a page summary. That could be a paragraph describing all the content on the page. And if you have Confluence Premium or Enterprise, you can use Rovo to create that for you. You might consider putting this in an excerpt macro so you can reuse the summary in other places in Confluence or put it in a panel to visually call it on on the page so people can see if it is indeed the page they are looking for. So maybe you've looked through all the templates included with Confluence and none of them are going to make the page look the way you'd like them to look. By the way, check out our video on templates. It could be a way to make your page beautiful without much effort at all. But you're a free spirit and you want to lay it out yourself. Laying out a page is not just a way to make it pretty, but it's a way to bring out important information for people to find very quickly as they're skimming through. The first thing you should decide is the width and alignment of the content on your page. The alignment generally is kept at left, which is optimized for left to right reading languages like English. In some cases, centering it might be fun. It does give a nice visual appeal, although it is less ideal for reading because it makes things real jaggedy and hard to follow. So in general, keep it left unless you wanna be fancy. When it comes to page width, use the narrow width for content that people are meant to read. It's optimized for reading around 60 characters per line, which is generally specified as ideal for people to view. Full width should only be used if you have a page with a lot of tabular content. So think a giant table or a really big list. It is not optimized for reading. So if your page is full of written content, keep it at that narrow width because it will be more effective for your teammates. Oh, and don't fret. If you have one table in the page that you want to be really wide, you can adjust the layout and width of any element on the page. So you could center some text or make an image bigger or make a video smaller. You have all of those controls within the content of the page as well. So think about what is needed for the whole page here and then adjust your elements accordingly. Finally, we want to add column layouts to break up the content of the page. You can have up to five columns across on a page, although that's not gonna look good on most screens. So maybe think about more like two or three column layouts, but play around with it. Break up your content into visual blocks to help people skim to the most important information. And of course, Add some extra space between those columns to give a little bit of visual separation, or maybe even a divider line. Now that we've broken up all of our content visually on the page, we can use headings to break up the content by topic, using higher level headings for those broader topics and lower level headings for the more specific or even subtopics on the page. Headings are super important for people skimming pages, but also essential for those people using screen readers and other accessibility devices. With the headings in place, we can drop a table of contents macro in the top right of the page, which we've found to be a really great spot for it, so people can quickly click to go to the content that is most interesting to them. 
65% of people are visual learners. So while we do have our content laid out and organized well on the page, we need to add some visual elements to really communicate what we're talking about here. So first we could do this with text formatting. So changing some colors, highlighting some things, maybe bold and italicize some pieces of text for purpose. We could even alter the alignment. The trick here is to not use color to communicate something for those people who can't see color. So make sure it just adds to the page and is not a requirement for those people reading it. Oh, and don't forget to pop a few emoji here and there. It's really great for communicating very important things like emotion. There is so much you can do to make a table really effective, including adding a chart to visualize these numbers. Check out our video all about that. I'll drop a smart link or two here and use the different embed options to make sure it looks just the way I want on the page to make it not only beautiful, but also interactive. And because we know visuals matter a lot on our pages, try to include at least one image or diagram on every page you make. You can resize those images, add borders, but whatever you do, make sure you add alt text so those people who might not be able to see the image still understand what you're communicating with it. Oh, and if an image isn't enough, you could also drop in a video and format it similarly, and even a couple of files. Finally, there are some great elements and macros for your Confluence pages and live docs that help you call out and highlight content you've added. Things like the panel, which we looked at before for calling out important information. The quote, which can be great for calling out something someone said. The code snippet, if you're working with code, includes highlighting the divider line, which we looked at before for a great visual separation. The expand macro for what I would call bonus content, that content that not everybody needs to read, but some might want to know about. They could expand to read more. And the status element, which is great for calling out little visual chips around what might be happening. Finally, there are some great styling and presentation macros available to people using Confluence Premium or Enterprise. Those are the Spotlight, which is great for calling out a little bit of text and an image. There's the Carousel, where you can have a couple of images and text combinations. And finally, the Cards macro, which can include up to 10 cards that link off to important places. These are great for calling out important information, but not necessarily required for having a beautiful and effective page. So that's it. We've taken a wall of text page and turned it into a place where your teammates can very quickly find the information they need to be successful. We've used these tips and tricks at K15T to make lots of pages our teams reference every single day. And now if you have any questions, drop those in the comments below, share your thoughts, like and subscribe for more, and join us for another video as we continue to explore how to use Confluence to share what you do best.